Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now take a look at this Witcher 3 gameplay. It seems smooth enough, right? The fact that you're limited to seeing this footage at 60 FPS also helps me back up this point for sure, but if I enable the MSI Afterburner performance monitoring software, the frame times paint a different picture. The graph moving across the center left of the screen is all over the place, and what this means is that our frame times aren't consistent. In an ideal gaming scenario, the time that passes between each frame being rendered would be identical, but the more this differs, the less smooth the game feels, leading to what we usually refer to as stutter. Now, some people would assume that you all have a magic money tree and they'll tell you to upgrade your processor or graphics card in order to alleviate these frame time problems. Sure, that'll help, throwing money at a problem can do that, but if you can't upgrade right now and you find that modern games are causing issues with your aging hardware, there is a solution, a free one. I've spoken about this before, I used a similar method to get GTA 5 running smoothly on a dual core processor many years ago, but it's worth revisiting the subject because what I'm about to say is still very relevant and effective. A lot of games, including The Witcher, will have in-game frame rate limiter options. Here we can choose between 30 and 60. 60 FPS on my system will make the experience more consistent, but the frame times still aren't perfect, and I'm limiting the game to a far lower frame rate than my computer can actually handle. This is where MSI Afterburner and Revertuner comes in. Revertuner can be downloaded separately, but I'd recommend downloading MSI Afterburner and making sure that the Revertuner installation option is selected during install. MSI Afterburner can be used to enable specific hardware monitoring. We can choose to see CPU usage, GPU usage, temperatures, frame rates and frame times, etc, etc. This works in conjunction with Revertuner, which opens automatically when MSI Afterburner is opened. It's here we can set the font size, colour and position of the aforementioned on-screen analytics. It's also here that you'll find the frame rate limit option, which can be set to a number of your choosing, and applied on a global scale or game by game basis. We can add individual executable game shortcuts to this and essentially limit each game to a different frame rate if we wish. I'll leave a link to my full Afterburner and Revertuner installation video below if you want more info and guidance. It's a few years old now but nothing's really changed setup wise so it's still very much relevant. If we enable a global 60fps cap and jump back into The Witcher 3, you'll notice that our frame time graph is now completely smooth, almost all of the time. I believe the input delay is impacted slightly more than when we use the in-game frame rate limiter, but I'm talking milliseconds of difference. Older games, and perhaps ones notorious for frame time issues, will also benefit from a custom frame rate cap. Let's take GTA 4 for example. It's a brilliant title and with a few tweaks its performance can be significantly improved, especially with modern hardware. I set the frame rate limiter to 75 FPS here, which my configuration can deal with just fine. It's important to remember that you should choose a figure that your PC can consistently handle for the best results. Revertuner, or RTSS for short, turns GTA 4 into an absolutely delightful experience, even if there were a couple of micro stutters that remained here and there. Max traffic density will do that though, no matter the system that you're using. Capping my frame rate eased some of the frustration of trying to play games on a dual core CPU many years ago, and even today I'm still finding it very handy for use with mid-range and high-end systems, because sometimes the game engine itself can just cause problems, no matter how powerful or weak your hardware actually is. There are plenty of videos talking about this subject, but I wanted to throw my hat into the ring and let you know that it's still a solid way to combat some of those pesky stutters that can be detrimental to an enjoyable PC gaming experience. Now, NVIDIA and AMD both have their own tools to do this as well, but Revertuner provides a universal experience irrelevant of hardware. It's also worth having with Afterburner anyway for the sake of being able to monitor your hardware, something that can be very important when either building or configuring a new PC. It's always nice to know how things run and perform. That's all for this one then, I wanted to take a revisited look at this in 2022 just for the sake of hopefully helping some of you out. If you enjoyed this video leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully 
I'll see all of you in the next one, when we'll be testing another graphics card.